today what we're going to do is we're going to have a discussion about sexually transmitted diseases, uh, HIV and other types of diseases. This has become one of the growing concerns across the United States of America. But today we're specifically going to look at Fort Worth, Texas. We're going to look at the numbers, the demographics, who's mostly affected, and have a little bit of a discussion on, in terms of, you know, what, again, what do the numbers look like, uh, the population statistics, specifically in Fort Worth. Uh, to be able to do that, I'm going to be interviewing today Lamont, who works for Tarrant County Public Health, uh, and I'll have him introduce himself a little bit more tell you about the program uh, that he works for, uh, and then we'll take it from there. So, well, Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Lamont Lovelace. I work for Tarrant County Public Health, and I work for the HIP uh, program, Project HIP, Health Information is Power. So uh, uh, the program began with uh, Commissioner Brooks uh, in 2011. Uh, he wanted to combat the number of HIV and STD in the Tarrant County community. The okay. numbers were very high. Okay. In 2011, 12, and 13, uh, Tarrant County had some of the highest numbers in the state of Texas. Okay. So um, we put the, well, actually the program was put together by Commissioner Brooks and the Tarrant County Public Health Department. Okay. UNT Health Science Center also had some input in some of the uh, program itself. Okay. Uh, what we do, uh, myself, and uh, there's a, a Fort Worth uh, 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 hip, and then there's a Arlington hip. Okay. So but therefore, we're able to work within right those boundaries. Actually, the Fort Worth hip, hip can work throughout the whole uh, county of Tarrant County. Okay. So we go out and we go to different organizations uh, to try to train uh, organizations and their staff about HIV and STD okay. education. Uh, we go to Boys and Girls Clubs of America, we go to Girls Inc., uh, we go to high schools, okay. um, we go to a lot of technical schools that have uh, medical assistance and dental assistance, and we want to uh, go out and train those uh, workers. Okay. Yes. So when you visit the Boys and Girls Club, you visit schools or whatever organizations, what is your main uh, focus or topics of discussions. So we talk about uh, HIV and STD education on how to, uh, of course, how to uh, teach individuals how not to catch any STDs yeah. or HIV. Yeah. And we also want to educate them on the numbers uh, in the state of, I'm sorry, in Tarrant County okay. on what they look like, uh, demographics, so we go into male, female, and uh, genders and, and ethnic groups as well. Okay. Uh, we also want to discuss, uh, because it is a train-to-trainer concept, when uh, myself or Brenda Rios comes into the building to teach your staff, we also want you to understand that we, we want to educate your, your staff and then we want to, we would like for you to implement this program into your curriculum so we can somewhat back out and move to other organizations. Okay. What is the, in terms of age, the demographic that is most affected in Fort Worth, Texas? The highest numbers uh, right now are 14 to 24. Okay, so 14 yes. to 24. That's what we're focused on. Those are the numbers that are uh, very high in HIV and STD right now. All right. So with that said, let's take a look at uh, some of the numbers. Okay. All right, so I guess we could, so you said, uh, 14 to 24, yes. that's the main demographic, main group that is affected. And is that just with HIV or with? It's with all, all HIV, STDs. All, STDs. all STDs. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's go, I guess, by, we can go by race first. And let's look at gonorrhea. Gonorrhea, yeah. okay. So you have the form okay. here. Uh, uh, as, as you can see, uh, as far as gonorrhea goes, uh, African-American uh, males are leading in gonorrhea with 752. And we have a total of 485 for uh, African-American females. Okay. And, and uh, this was updated this, in, okay. yes, January, January uh, to December 2016. Yeah, 2016 okay. yes. And so we, our highest number, as you can see at the top, are uh, 14, 15 to 24 
with uh, 17, over 1,700 cases. Uh, that's, and we go from 14, zero to uh, age 45 and over. Okay. But the 14 and 24 year olds are the highest. Okay. And, and, and then we go to white, Hispanic, and Asian. And there's more males uh, right now with, uh, with gonorrhea than females. On so the, the black or African American communities mostly affected, followed by the Caucasian, and then followed by Hispanic. Uh, demographic. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna let you run through some more okay. numbers. With it. So you can go through uh, as far as chlamydia, you will see that uh, there was over last year there were over I'm sorry 2016 mm -hmm. uh, up till December there was uh, the 14 to 24 year olds had almost 6,000 cases of uh, chlamydia. Okay. And if, if you notice here, the more females, mm -hmm. black, white, Hispanic, and Asian had more chlamydia than males. And we want to usually, uh, a female goes to the physician once a year mm -hmm. if she's not in pain. Okay. Uh, she, she's either if she's not pregnant or if she's not in pain, she goes once a year for a yearly checkup. Mm -hmm. So therefore, she can miss an STD. Because usually chlamydia doesn't have any symptoms, smell or pain, or because a woman has a natural discharge anyway, you can always uh, misunderstand or may mistake the discharge okay. for a regular discharge instead of chlamydia. Uh, so there's women have more chlamydia here than males. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to go over to uh, also, I want to talk a little bit about PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. So if a woman holds an STD for too long, mm -hmm. she can uh, b develop scar tissue around her ovaries and her fallopian tubes can swell up. She can get a lot of pain and infection. And a lot of these uh, PID can be associated to infant mortality. A lot of infant mortality rates in Tarrant County are some of the highest in the state of Texas. Okay. And that's due to the fact of STDs. Okay. All right? So the, you call it PID? Yes, pelvic right. inflammatory okay. disease. And so basically, uh, you know, she gets pregnant, chances of the child developing, developing. Uh, uh, the mother uh, is contracted with STDs for different reasons. Maybe she's having a hard time in her living situation or in a relationship to where she may or may not know she's pregnant. Uh, most women uh, uh, don't know they're pregnant at the time and they're okay. going through the diff different uh, living situations or relationship issues yeah. and then therefore uh, can, can run a risk, high risk of catching an STD. Okay. So uh, can we talk a little bit more about the the 14 to 24 years? Because it, it's, you know, it, it's pretty low, all right? I wasn't expecting to hear 14. So uh, what are the reasons behind that based on the research that you have available to you and, you know? well. What just basically just by working in the field yeah. uh, for over ten years, as I'm not an expert in that, yeah. but but personally I may feel like I think that's the experimental age, okay. fourteen to twenty four, and yeah. uh, you know you start to develop your own, you get your own apartment, you get a job, you 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 start making risky, uh, un, un, you know, just decisions that are not healthy, okay. and uh, so we talk about uh, healthy sexual negotiating decision-making in the program and so I think some of these uh, young 14 to 24 year olds don't know how to negotiate yeah. and they do have risk do take risks when it comes to sex okay so what what usually is the, the re how receptive are these teenagers when you talk to very them? receptive we show we have two different PowerPoints we have a PowerPoint to where we show photos of individuals uh, who have previously had STDs, STDs yeah. and then we show uh, videos with, with, with PowerPoints that don't have photos. Okay. And, and I, the ones that have photos are very powerful because these are realistic individuals here in Tarrant County. Okay. So yeah, yeah, they're really receptive. Are they surprised as well when they hear it's 14 to, or does it not really catch The that? older individuals uh, uh, sure are obviously more, more yeah. surprised. All right, is there anything else you wanted to cover? Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about HIV. Okay. And um, we're going to allow uh, my coworker, Brenda okay. Rios, to speak a little more about that. Okay, all right. 
So what we'll do now is we'll take a break and then we'll come back and then we'll continue this discussion. Hello and welcome back uh, to the discussion that I'm having here with Lamont. And so what we're going to do is we're going to continue with some statistics and then we're going to discuss viruses and we'll see where we, where we go with that. So let's, what, what do you got else got so there for us? What I have here is uh, a chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis chart okay. in the years 2013, 14, and 15. Okay. And it's just basically showing you uh, how the numbers of STDs go up. So in 2013, mm -hmm. we had over 11,000 cases of uh, total STDs and bacteria. Okay. And then we, it went to uh, 11,000, over 11,300. And now it's over 12,000 cases. So it's been going up. Yes, uh, yes, like yes seven years. every seven okay. years. So now when we talk about viruses in the uh, health information of power, uh, program we talk about vir bacterial STDs and we talk about viral STDs mm -hmm. and then for viral we talk about explain the difference between the two before you the, the of, of viral oh and, okay yeah, so yeah. Uh, thank you <laughs> so for for difference between bacterial and viral is bacterial uh, STDs are curable you know oh, okay. coming to the health department right. or your physician's office and, and, and go see your doctor and you can get in uh, medication and, okay. and treat it you know, yourself and your partner. So as far as her, uh, 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 viruses, they're non-curable. So if you catch uh, herpes simplex one or two, you will have it for the rest of your life. If you catch HPV, which is a very fast growing STD right now, you'll have it for the rest of your life, or hepatitis A, B, or C. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, they do have medications for hep C now, they're very expensive. Uh, and, and HIV, uh, of course, you know, you have that for life right yeah. now until they come up with a cure. Okay. Uh, so uh, we'll talk a little bit about, just, we'll just start off with, uh, let's say, hepatitis okay. A, B, and C. Right. So hep A is, uh, you know, it's contaminated. Why, uh, if it's your food or your water is contaminated, uh, or it's human feces or whatever inside the water or the food. Okay. And hep B is uh, sexually transmitted, and we have a, a high rate of, uh, of 14 to 24 year olds that have risky sexual behavior. Okay. So they see a lot of this uh, risky sexual behavior on uh, movies or on television and they try to emulate that in the bedroom. So they catch a lot of heavy. Stuff they hear in music? Yeah. Oh, especially music. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have songs uh, talking about licking licking your anus. So, so therefore they, they emulate that in the bedroom. So this is how a lot of uh, individuals catch Hep B. Okay. Uh, and Hep C, also uh, sharing needles, uh, uh, tattoos, using dirty needles, and, and things of that nature. So body piercings yeah. uh, can, can also r relate to Hep C. Maybe someone's doing drugs. Doing, yeah, yeah. sharing needles. Sharing I needles. Use, yeah, yeah. yeah, when they, yeah. yeah especially uh, sharing needles. Uh, and so, and we also have, we're going to talk a little bit about HIV again. Okay. Uh, and we have uh, pre exposure. Uh, medication and we have post exposure medication to help reduce Is your that risk. expensive? Uh, actually, it's not, it's, okay. it's free. So, uh, I'm gonna let Brenda Rios, my uh, co worker, speak okay. to you a little bit about that okay. as well. And then she'll also talk to you about uh, how to get SCD uh, te testing and, and uh, the locations. Okay, all right. all right. So, I guess it's a good time for us to take uh, another break and then we'll have Brenda come in and she'll. Uh, provide us with some more information. Okay, so let's talk a little bit of, a little bit about PEP. What exactly is PEP? It's PEP, correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. PEP is post exposure prophylaxis, which is a medication. It's it's also an HIV medication who's given to a person who's been either exposed or they've been sexually assaulted or know that they've been exposed to somebody who's HIV positive and the person is not positive that's okay. been exposed. So they, it has to be taken within 72 hours of exposure, okay. and we do offer it at the Tarrant County Public Health now. We, okay. It wasn't offered before, but it is offered now. Okay. Although you have to keep in mind it has to be within the 72 hours of exposure. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right, so there's PEP. Uh, let's talk about PrEP. Hello, and welcome back to the discussion that we're having today about STDs, HIV, and other types of sexually transmitted diseases. So I have Lamont's coworker now, Brenda, and she's gonna talk about PrEP. She'll tell us what PrEP is, where it's offered, and give us some more information on it. So if you go ahead and. Yes, 
So PrEP is actually pre-exposure prophylaxis, and what it is is an anti-retroviral uh, drug, which is an HIV medication okay. called Truvada. So um, it, what it is used, anybody who's HIV negative could take it to prevent them from getting HIV. Mm -hmm. So what we, or what Dr. Courtney Sherman at the Tarrant County Public Health likes to sometimes explain is that it's like a birth control. You know, okay. women take birth control yeah. to not get pregnant. Yeah. So PrEP is a form of birth control to okay. not contract HIV, of course. So do you have to be taking it every day? Yeah. Is there a certain? Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, now PrEP is taken on an everyday basis and it is effective. Of course, we do recommend to also you still use condoms, okay. but it is effective. Anybody could take PrEP, okay. um, but it's most importantly for people who have high risk behaviors, men who have sex with men, commercial sex workers, AKA prostitutes, okay. um, and just basically anybody could, okay. could, could take it. So is it offered all over Texas? Or? Yeah, it is offered all over Texas, but uh, we are actually the only health department in the entire state of Texas that offers it. Okay. Um, and in some cases it could be free at charge, okay. it, even if you don't have insurance. And okay. It is pretty expensive. Um, so that's what kind of stops people from even looking into it. But mm -hmm. if you do come to the Tarrant County Public Health um, and you either do or do not have insurance, there's ways where we can okay. get it. All right. So just to wrap up the interview now, is there any other detail information that you'd like to provide? Uh, I guess maybe your location or... Y yes, and we are located at 1101 South Main Street mm -hmm. um, in Fort Worth, Texas, 76104. And, um, we do offer free, um, well, we do have sometimes free testing okay. for HIV, like in World AIDS Day or different special health fair events. Okay. But um, there is, you could call to get further information on there. And, and as you're talking about that, if, if an organization wants you to visit, what's the protocol? They just have to contact you? Yes, and we'll give you our contact information and okay. we, we can go and if they want testing, there's a prevention team that goes out and does testing for which or what, whichever organization okay. would like it. And um, as Lamont explained, we do Project HIP, Health Information is Power, and we could go out and educate okay. individuals with that. And just to help you guys out, I'll also make sure that the information is provided as well with the video. Uh, you'll be able to just look below, check the comments in the description section, and you'll be able to get the address and the contact information if you're probably trying to get them to come out to talk to your organization. So thank you very much for being here today and thank Lamont as well. Uh, and thank you guys for tuning in as usual. Uh, don't forget to subscribe as well. Don't forget to follow. I'll have more discussions coming on STDs and other sexually transmitted diseases in the near future. Again, thank you very much. Make sure to leave your comments and get tested.